there is a point where architects need to stop exercising their control over spaces and expecting whatever they draw on paper to be built and retained as it is. So we create for them a high-rise building where they are aloof from their own lifestyle, lifestyles, which is much more communal than it is private. Hello all. Today we are here for a very important episode. We are going to discuss a thesis project. You know, we all architects do thesis, but you know, we get chance to talk about our thesis very, very rarely. So today we have with us Santrupti Das, who's a to be architect very soon. You know, she just completed her BR and she's going to talk about a very important topic in which she just completed her thesis. You know, Santrupti is not only, you know, a student, she's also an origami enthusiast, a very active person. And, you know, her topic, her choice for the topic, you know, tells how sensitive she is towards the human experience, how sensitive she is towards how people in the city live and especially people in the lower strata of the society. So I request Santrupti to please, you know, uh, tell us about her experience, about this thesis project, about what happened. And, you know, something about, you know, the title of it, something about the description of it. So please, Santrupti, all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so my thesis was on the dialogical milieu in situ slum rehabilitation of Mohammedpur slums. I would first like to explain the title, the dialogical milieu, which roots from two concepts that were the drivers of my thesis. The dialogical milieu basically comes from openness and social logic. Openness basically refers to a system that is able to interact with its externalities that are outside the system and take a feedback from them and hence evolve over time. So it's a system which is uh, constantly evolving, self-evaluating and evolving. And it is able to look at something which is different from its constituents, something which could be odd or curious or possible, and to consider it also as a part of existence and not deny it. So architecturally speaking, that would mean that we look at the built form, how we as designers or the architects build. And then we also look at how people live in those spaces. How are people appropriating their spaces? How are they making it their own? Because only the composition of these two, the designed space and the lived space is what builds, let's say an urban space, a city. Absolutely. So, so, so you know, to just ask you at this moment, what is the current reality? So, you know, if you're talking about, uh, you know, this great uh, new thing, the new way of looking at how people live. So, you know, I want to directly jump into what is the current reality of the people who are the service class in Delhi? You know, we have our drivers, you know, we have our uh, people who come and work in our houses. We have so many other people, you know, who, you know, right now in the lockdown, they are not there. So we really feel their absence. So where, who are these people? Where do they come from? Where do they stay in Delhi? Can you tell us about them? Yes. So it was during the lockdown only that we realized that this certain sector of the city also exists. And it is because of them that we, the commoners of the city, as we call ourselves, actually survive. Our economic social systems work because of them. So they end up finding their place within the city in urban villages and slums, which end up being neglected mostly by how the city development goes ahead. So. Although Delhi is trying to become a global city at some point, it is proceeding in that direction and we are developing the city. But there are parts of Delhi that yet need to at least come to the standard of the current development in Delhi. So we tend to neglect them. And hence what happens is they organically grow around their own households, how they build houses for their own selves and um, the community is built on their own. So what I was talking about openness, they basically already are open in a lot of ways but it is also important to note that during the lockdown pandemic we also realized that uh, health is another issue and here when we look at 
the specific slum so, that so I was Santrupti, really Santrupti, I would love you if you could just also show us the work and the graphics around it. So this is what I was explaining you about how openness is and how people interact various social spheres, the social logic, various social hierarchies. So you might have a different kind of an interaction with your family members. with your siblings with relatives with friends so those are the different social spheres that we interact with and more often than not all these social spheres actually overlap with each other and coexist so how does the physical environment look for such a space to happen so this is what i came up with that the slum is a strategic confluence of social political and economic systems of any city and it's a complex urban phenomena it is important to note that like you can see the images here that uh, the most characteristic feature of a slum is that its lifestyle is very different from how we look at formal housing in general for middle income groups or high income groups their relationship to the ground plane to the out, outer uh, open spaces around their houses is of prime importance there absolutely and thus these are certain case studies that i did and briefly the site is located uh, adjacent to a village also to an urban village and the site is land locked by it then so this is the site you know were... just uh, uh, next to yes. mohammadpur village near the yes. bsf hospital it is close to the bhikaji kama place okay 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 close to the bhikaji yes. kama place so the mohammadpur village and slum is considered together okay. and yes the duac also proposes a rehabilitation for both of them together okay okay so it's right? both of them together absolutely absolutely okay okay yes. okay yeah but the problem with that proposal and why i took up with as my thesis to relook at it in a different way was that we generally end up creating uh, a proposal or a scheme for design of upliftment of these households is that we um, divert from the fact that the lifestyles are different from us and we create for them a high rise building where they are aloof from their own lifestyle lifestyles which is much more communal than it is private our houses our homes are at the entrance door of our own house and they are confined within that whereas their lifestyles flows out spills out from the contents of their home or the house the physical house to the outside as well absolutely absolutely so these are certain design drivers or what i was thinking about to put into my design the first was organic clustering because that is how they have built their own houses they don't have a clear grid that they work on so it would be important we will realize that what are the advantages of having organic clusters and to provide open spaces to each unit as you see here this is a diagram to explain that uh, almost to what the built area is is what the open spaces available to them flexibility in building housing modules because each module will require to be appropriated or to cater to their needs because they have already devised a system of building building or appropriating their spaces in a way that is comfortable for them the next thing as i talked about health is hierarchy of greens currently if we look at any slums in delhi or elsewhere we generally have uh, very narrow passageways and you know buildings almost hugging each other so there is a lack of natural ventilation and light which creates unhealthy situations so the the green environment would ensure that then the social logic of space as i explained and then enhancing the quality of life this specific driver was the most important for me to understand that we have to just enhance the quality of the living conditions and not take them away from their own lifestyles then the technology drivers were prefabrication modular design and sustainability so this is what my concept was that slum dwellers use the ground plane much much more effectively than we do they have a lot of the communal or personal activities happening on the ground plane itself for example playing cooking eating chit chatting vending drying clothes uh, so it is very important for us to note that when we build for them we are taking away that ground from them 
they were very connected to the ground plane so what we can do while we are building is if we are able to create a composition of open built spaces in a way that we create we add horizontal planes throughout their massing so that they can use extra ground plane which might not be exactly ground zero but at a higher level they are still able to use a surface uh, a horizontal surface that they can use to reclaim their lifestyles so that was my uh, concept from there we come to the social logic of space here i realize that it's important to let architecture or the science of design be available to them and there's a very simple thing called the social logic of space which uses the space syntax grasshopper code which might sound complex but what it does is puts all these spaces together like i've mentioned the units the courtyards and the entrance in a certain social hierarchy according to a theory so so and- the uh, to interrupt you could you tell the viewers about this grasshopper uh, algor- algorithms and the grasshopper syntax codes please like in a minute yes yes so space syntax code um takes these spaces like i'll if i were to explain here um so it takes this various uh, values of you know the kinds of spatial compositions that we require for example i entered that i need 550 units i need so many green spaces and then it optimizes the distances between them and uh, by distance i mean a logical distance and not in uh meters it's not let it's uh, a different kind of a meaning and it puts out parameters and these diagrams are created because of this code um for example here it says that if you have to maintain a social hierarchy of space you must ensure that all the units are at equal number of steps from the entrance again these are not physical steps but theoretical steps so from the entrance if you are connecting to a common green and then to a courtyard which then connects to the unit there should not be any unit that slides down in hierarchy and comes here at depth 2 and is directly connected to the common green so that is the social hierarchy we talk of and this depth map gives us an actual map which provided me with the first zone which explained how to have that hierarchy of greens and social hierarchy we will have to end up with courtyard like structures we will have to have pockets of greens around which there would be built form and then these pockets of greens directly would be connected to another green and so on absolutely so you know thank you for explaining uh, the syntax and the social space syntax but you know for the viewers a uh, grasshopper is a parametric design uh, technology in which you yes, know yes. basically the parameters that we provide you know that have to be met they are optimized by the software system and they give us the desired right. result but keeping all the parameters in mind and keeping giving us the most optimized result so yeah thank you so much for that yes so after that because i was talking of openness so openness cannot be used as a concept unless it is used as a concept for the process design itself so uh, every unit because it's a very small unit it can be composed of three components the common area the private area and service area each household unit can be considered that so these three components can now be clubbed together the social logic of space is that when you have one space and you want to enter a second space you should always have an adjacent border now here they are diagrammatically represented at squares they could be any shape but you always have an adjacent border for a passage way to be there between them so when we have these three units three components of each unit we start placing them so we fix one unit and the one component and then we have four parts where we can four positions where we can put the second and so on and with that theoretically we are able to produce about 114 144 different ways of aligning or arranging these components out of which only 24 follow the social logic of space which means that the entrance needs to be connected to the common area and your toilet and sorry the service areas and the private area need to be individually connected to the open space itself in in a house of a little higher economic zone let's say an hig you end up having your toilets inside the bedroom so their social hierarchy is different here since it's just one toilet to the entire house you need to keep connected to the common space so using that logic 
and the fact that the entrance should have uh, an edge which can be connected to the outside and then the services should always align one atop the other and the fact that for the uh, orange space to have some natural ventilation because we have already said that the yellow is going to have natural ventilation because it's connected to the outside for the orange to have natural ventilation whenever we make the massing we should be clear that you know it should have minimum of one of the edges empty so using all that logic we came up with these constraints and i started creating iterations for that where initially i put eight of these units together the shapes of units because organic character because of organic character and then i realized that i will have to connect these units together because they are of course communal so it's not necessary that only eight families are going to talk to each other so these corridors came into existence at stage 2 with staircases connecting that although it was an interesting massing to look at it would have caused problem for the people who are living there and it's important for us as designers to not only look at the aesthetics of that space but also how people would be using it so since this complicated massing is going to create an issue with way finding at the next stage of stage 3 i uh, localized the cores a little more so that for every set of clusters you have a single core and here the massing regressed a bit and then i went on to the next stage of design where organically i created multiple floor plates of those um, uh, units like how i mentioned about localizing the cores and then with multiple floor plate options i stacked them one above the other in different ways and looked at the various configurations possible in massing and i stopped at the point where i felt that yes this has a good uh, combination of open and built spaces and from there i came to my final massing which was according to me a good composition of voids within the built that's a beautiful voids rendering that people, that's a beautiful render thank you voids which people could use own up to and live so you see there are constantly there are these horizontal surfaces that are vacant for people to use absolutely now what does that mean in terms of the site plan or architectural uh, numbers and stuff is that the total achieved built up area becomes 39386 for 500 housing units that would mean approximately 33.3 square meters of external social space per unit which is almost comparable to 43 43 square meters of area of each unit which then brings us to the conclusion that probably the proportion of open to build that we look at in other kinds of housing is different from here and this almost has equal amount of open and build spaces okay then to look at the site planning detail in in detail uh, i'll zoom into the ground floor plan cluster of one of the clusters and here we see the social hierarchy in action like i mentioned in the space syntax code and this is an architectural rendition of the same where there is a common green outside each cluster from which there are paths that connect directly not into each unit but into the courtyard because that is the second social space from there there is a passage way like this i diagrammed it which then connects you to each unit so there is a public space a semi public space which is the courtyard and then the private realm which is the unit so right outside the unit you have a large proportion of area which is used as a communal space Absolutely. now looking at the unit itself because to me this was very important to be sensitive about the unit because that is where you start and this is the module that grows in scale and becomes the whole massing so it is important to note that uh, again their lifestyles are different and they constantly appropriate their spaces so a family of 5 might be living in this small unit but they might be able to make do with all the various furniture layouts that they're going to do for their own houses uh, for example at night they might be using a bed mattress which they can roll up and clear that space in the morning for other activities hence the idea was to not have any partition walls and to only allow them to have uh, a cot so essentially the, the unit was laid out in a can way repeat, that it follows the social order can you repeat from can you repeat from allow them to have another your voice got cut yes 
okay so uh, so to allow them to have their own variations of how they would like to use their space there was no internal partition walls that were given in the units they could have obviously have temporary partitions like a curtain or something within the unit itself it was strictly following the social logic of cold, uh, of space which like we discussed there's a yellow space there's an orange space and the blue space that kind of a logic and also each of these modules because we needed multiple different profiles of these configurations so as to have that organic character care was taken to have all of them have a similar is for natural ventilation so there's an edge exposed to the outer surface which like the constraints has the balcony and top, which is the blue area and has one edge with the bedroom or the private space that we were talking about and apart from that there are these orange spaces which are going to be the connecting spaces which you can uh, bring in cohesion with a sep- next unit and these are the spaces that can connect with each other and then like we mentioned there has to be an open edge at the entrance so this is how i looked at the uh, unit again it was following the social logic of space like i mentioned it's a very good idea yeah, you know to have flexible spaces which can be adjusted not only by a person uh, for the rest of his life but also for that person you know during times of the day so he have a different uh, arrangement in the morning yes. different arrangement in the afternoon and different arrangement in the evening so great great that's yes. a, that's a very good identification of what actually happens in slums so great so this same space the kids could sit down in the morning and study and at night someone is sleeping at that same space absolutely so at the upper floor plans let's look at the first floor and understand what that morphology is the units still start joining with each other in the similar fashion like the first, ground floor but here the corridor spills out into these terraces that we saw in the massing now it is interesting to note that the circulation here becomes 43% of the floor area which is slightly higher than the conventional 40% that we generally talk of in buildings yes. so here we note that there is a requirement for changing the code itself absolutely to be absolutely. to be able to accommodate the ways in which slum dwellers live and here spaces like near the staircase or wherever the top corridor is widening people can use it for various activities and uh, santu please i have a question here i have a question here yes. uh you know so uh, the circulation spaces and the common shared areas in housing that were developed in america were the reason you know for crime to develop there for example uh, you know the common yes. shared areas are the spaces where nobody maintains it because nobody has ownership of them so you know do you think having common areas as such would mm-hmm. prevent crime would make sure that there is no uh, you know uh, neglect of these areas because there is nobody to maintain it or is is there some mechanism of having a community building which where there is maintenance of the spaces please tell us about it okay so uh, these spaces since i have been mentioning constantly that people spill out of their houses very often in slums they would actually just use the interiors areas let's say only for the most private of activities or most closed in of activities apart from that you would generally see you know um, old men kids people of different age groups playing together sitting on these spaces so these are going to be very active spaces throughout okay. the day okay and okay the lifestyle of uh, and the climate of delhi also allows for you to put a charpai there and you know sleep at night also in these terraces absolutely also one of the advantages of openness or to allow openness is not open spaces only openness is a concept which goes beyond architecture and what it talks of is that you allow people to come together fight it out debate it and to solve all these things within themselves within that social realm that is what the dialogical milieu means that you discuss you debate and you come up with solutions like this specific terrace that we talk of here these households might say that you know i am going to place my plants here or someone might say that i am going to use this wall for hanging my clothes now it's up to them to fight it out and when Absolutely. they fight it out they take ownership of that space like you mentioned currently that who owns that space Absolutely. whoever is using that at whatever point is owning that space okay also 
I created, I introduced these curves in on the inner edge of the courtyard and allowed for different varying profiles because this is the kind of space that forms. You can now talk across floors also. Absolutely. Then this is how the elevation looks like. The finish is of painted stucco plastered walls with the parapets and columns in very bold colors. You can look and identify yourself with the terraces because they highlight the entire massing, these horizontal and vertical members. And the massing itself is a composition of these terraces, which according to me are the most important component of my design. And they also self-shade the entire form thus reducing heat gain. Absolutely. This is how I am imagining the space to be used. Again, it is important to note that it will be used even much more informally than how I can conceive here sitting in a different kind of a social setup. Absolutely. Absolutely. So but this I is how the open void spaces work and terraces and, you know, various kinds of spaces where people interact. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. So, you know, uh, and, uh, so, so you just highlighted a very important point that, you know, uh, architects, you know, need to be really, really, really sensitive towards what people might need. And, you know, sometimes in this process, we need to be really, really be flexible and open to, uh, you know, exactly. that being adapted in a way that we might not be able to envision right now, because people at the end are the owners of the space that we are going to create. And the approach to architecture, especially when you're doing social housing, should never be top down. It should always be right. bottoms up, which Bottom. uh, Santrupti has, you know, very well covered in whatever she has uh, spoken till now. So go ahead, please. So this is like the final graphic where I show that uh, when we are talking of synchronicity, which means economically, a lot of different activities will keep happening. Dialogical, which means socially, there would be a dialogue and not a monologue there. Now, when you look at this entire project, you don't have one unit which can stand out and say, you know, I am the most important space of this entire project. Or there is not one person, like I cannot ever say that I designed the space and 20 years later also the space is going to look as it is very pristine. Absolutely. It is going to change over time. And that is the beauty of the space, which is appropriation. And that is how all of this comes together. My proposition in action in the space how people use this space. So that is what it is. Absolutely. Ultimately, for the purpose of construction, I suggested prefabrication to be used for the units, which could be done with uh, steel structure and EPS panels as the infill member. It could have been alternately done with brick or AAC blocks, but since it's in situ redevelopment, you need to do it at a very quicker uh, pace. Absolutely. So EPS is going to bring that into action, make it quicker. Okay. And these are certain sustainability strategies that I talked of, like there is the open plan enables natural ventilation at the site planning level, the orientation and having trees around that helps. And at the massing level, there is a shading which is happening and flat roofs also allow for a better uh, thermal comfort. Absolutely, absolutely. These are certain bird eye views of the site. And then... This is the overall how I am expecting this place to work as. Very nice, very beautiful. Currently, beautiful. an architect's point of view might be this single color thing, but probably people might end up painting walls, painting end up as per their own exactly yes. hanging certain things. So this will be much more vibrant when it's being used. Absolutely. So generally, you know, we look at you know, any project. Uh, for all the yes. architects listening to this, to make a building look vibrant, you have to make it look diverse. And you know, when people right. own the space, it becomes diverse. So, you know, everywhere where you see, like in Chandigarh or, you know, wherever there is a built control, there is a lot of monotony. And the best way right. to break monotony, uh, the best way to break monotony is to let people own the space and to modify it and to adapt to it and to change it according to their own choices. Yes, Santu. That is true. And something that I realized after yesterday's thesis, uh, my own jury was that generally all other built forms are at the best quality of space when they are just constructed or at the render stage or just 
given out for use but it is this kind of a slum housing which will reach its zenith of being vibrant or being at its best possible state would be once it is already used absolutely there would be beauty in it once you know you see people hanging something here on these and something else happening here absolutely all these things will change and that is when something which i cannot expect or predict already i can only provide them with certain parameters or certain facilities that they can then build on their own absolutely absolutely so this absolutely. is how the social realm looks like absolutely someone standing on the staircase someone playing here looking on to it from the corridor so when you yes. mention about crime being an issue such a social setup will actually ensure eyes on the street Absolutely, which is an urban design Absolutely. concept, Absolutely. which constantly Absolutely. happens here. Urban design concept, also known as natural surveillance. So when you yes. know, a site is visible, when there are people around, so any kind of opportunity, opportunistic crime decreases substantially. Go ahead, Tantu. Hmm. Yes. Then these are the kinds of spaces you constantly keep looking at each other on in all these out. outer spaces so you're self aware and you're also accepting that there might be someone else who is not exactly like me but is living in their own social realm these kinds of spaces like i mentioned that the corridor at certain spaces widens up to create that social space absolutely this is again a view this is how it's looking like and this is how you look at their blocks also so everything looks similar and how people will then appropriate their individual modules and because each of these modules can be read as a separate space like this module you can read as a separate space this is a different module so then when they start coloring their spaces bringing out life into their spaces they can stand at something which is like this the open green and then point out ki see that green colored building wall is my wall they own up to that space even more so with that, that this is the last view where i show the central green open space which they could use for playing or they could use for any community activity that they do absolutely yeah. so thank you thank you so much for sharing you know like i'm sure your members of your jury have given you a lot of comments good and bad it's mostly good mm. i must say uh, in with this great project that you've done so you know i want to highlight a few good things about what you've done so you know your project has number one as i already mentioned a your approach and your thought frame has been towards sensitize a sensitized way of looking towards people in the slums these are the people who form the majority of our workforce in delhi they are the people who form the majority of the people as far as the population is concerned in delhi so you know these are the people who are the least served in delhi also you know they have the least number of electrical connections least number of water connections so you know having a kind of a space for them which you know is not a a big break from the kind of slums that they were already in you know this is actually a vertical way of creating the good thing about the slum that was the interaction that was the common spaces that was the control over the ground and you know ground being the major playground for them throughout the day for various activities so you know this is absolutely you know a very good way of providing them something which is not a major shift from them because when we talk about mumbai you know mumbai when they did slum redevelopment they created boring matchbox structures and you know people say that it eventually became a vertical slum so in this project what we see clearly is that there is no vertical slum being created as such because you know it is built with a soul it is built with you know giving proper spaces it is given it is you know all the important uh, social spaces like the playgrounds like the common meeting areas like the co in, inside courtyards are provided you know that was not the case in many of the slum redevelopment projects in mumbai which were one matchbox along with one matchbox with very little space you know between them so this thought that slum redevelopment must have a soul this thought that slum redevelopment must have an approach which is more humane this thought that right. slum development should have an approach which takes care of their daily activity which takes care of their lifestyle and integrates that into a design which they will adapt to which they will accept you know in a better way so what is your message santrupti for example if 
the government would, would to you know take up this project and actually make it at that site what would you say what would you tell them what would you tell the viewers right now i think i'm biting into my own plate but uh, there is a point where architects need to stop exercising their control over spaces and expecting whatever they draw on paper to be built and retained as it is so i think that is one big realization as i cross from a student life to a professional life is that there is a point there is only so much you can control people's lives because after all you go back home and you also appropriate your, your own spaces you know the moment you remove that architecture coat out of you and then you become a common man yourself then you realize that you are using your own bed for working and for having your breakfast which in a design that you were doing for let's say a slum dweller you had a dinner table you had a breakfast table and you were expecting them to do that so i think it is important for us to descend a bit down from being the almighty you know the lord of space to becoming someone who is serving space because we have the knowledge of how spaces might work and we have to accept that apart from that built environment that we are constantly thinking of there is a lived environment too so if this is ever gets constructed it is important that at all stages this is something that i did was very preliminary so when it gets into the design development or the construction stage it is very important that we are still sensitive of the fact that we don't end up you know for example on these open social spaces that i'm talking about if you end up providing fixed benches also there that curbs the concept that we are talking about Absolutely. because you never know they want to put a charpai there or they want to put just a mat and sit or they want to play or they want to cycle there. exactly yeah. and for kids these open spaces are large enough on the upper floors also they could actually cycle there absolutely 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 so yeah that's a take away and and you know uh, so for all the slum redevelopment that is happening in this country what is the suggestion that you would give that all the slum redevelopment what is the one thing or the two things or the three things they should keep in mind before doing slum redevelopment just to you know conclude it conclude this session hmm. please tell us about it okay so the first thing is slum redevelopment like any other project architectural project that we talk of is not just a quantitative fulfillment of a certain if there is a housing shortage of 500 houses so you just provide 500 houses that's not it uh, what are we architects for when we have had a training on sensitivity of space and all of that so it is important to ensure that there is a quality to that space as well it is not just stacking 500 blocks we don't have them in our cupboards where we just stack it and okay here are 500 units so it's important to respond to that the first point the second point is to be sensitive that slum redevelopment is very different from general housing that we talk of and at some point it probably would be complex also because there are complex socio political economic uh, confluences and um and debates that will happen in these spaces absolutely 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 right absolutely. they there are various stakeholders when it comes to the slum redevelopment there might be some person who wants the city to become a global city and wants to go away with the slums absolutely. but the moment you knock out any social strata out of the entire hierarchy the entire system collapses okay. so then it is important to have the slums then if it is important to have the slums and if they retain the slums in the way they currently are then it is unhygienic and you are not taking out the complete potential of the slums so if you have a slum rehabilitation the idea is not to eradicate the slum it is to just uplift the way people live so that is something which is important to keep in mind ki you are not creating an apartment out of the slums absolutely and when you keep this society happy the social strata which is the slum dwellers happy then you essentially just transfer that entire energy across all the social hierarchy of the entire thing absolutely 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 yeah. absolutely that's a great message you know that santrupti has given that if you keep the lower people the people in the lower strata who are slum dwellers happy the whole ecosystem of the city is going to work really well because hmm. their fulfillment you know giving them the space that they deserve will eventually have 
the whole city ecosystem you know being fulfilled and the interlocking and the interrelationship between all of us will be more happy merry and integrated so great message right. thank you so much for sharing this important slum you know rehabilitation project and i'm sure people who are listening to this people who are watching this will actually take some learning out of this and whenever they get an opportunity to do anything to do with slum rehabilitation slum redevelopment they will keep in mind the needs of the people so thank you so much santrupti it was great having you thank you very much thank you it was my pleasure as well Let me do my two step